Well, first of all, welcome everybody, and thank you so much for being here. I'm looking forward to all the stuff that we're going to be talking about tonight, and I'm looking forward to learning from everybody. Tonight's topic is how to create a profitable email newsletter, and it was great getting to know you guys before we started our recording. And what I found is that everybody's here to learn not only just the profitable part, which is, of course, interesting and amazing, but also the whole idea of creating an email newsletter. We're going to dive in today of what does that actually mean, what does that look like, and how we can build one for ourselves. In our audience, I see we have educators, we have entrepreneurs, we have professionals, we've got podcasters, we've got a lot of people in here, and it is so nice to have everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. This is actually the second in a series of TeacherCast webinars. We did our first one over the summertime of how to create a brand for your educational business, and today we're gonna to be diving into more of the marketing and get more focused on things. For more information, if you're looking, you can, of course, check everything out over at teachercast.net slash webinar to say thank you for being here today i have a, a a few goodies and we've got some some surprises as we go through the webinar today so you're gonna have to stick around to the end i'm actually going to be giving you guys a link to my build your edu brand checklist it's really is a one-stop shop pdf of everything that you need to not only create your side hustle but make it thrive and grow it into a business or into a profitable um, entity to help yourself the reason why we're all here is simple we all have families. We're all trying to find a little bit of extra income to help our families out. This was basically my story. My story is simple. I was a music teacher. I was conductor. I was running around New York, New Jersey. And when the, the children came, I have triplets. We needed to figure out a way to have me stay at home yet still make money. And the way that mm -hmm. I did that was to create a, po a podcast which turned into teachercast.net. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we go. But the biggest thing that I'm gonna be trying to impress everybody is everything that we're talking about today is not difficult, but it's a little bit methodical and it's a little bit scientific. Now, today I also have a, a guest host that's on. I wanna have him quickly do an introduction of himself. He is an amazing um, uh, voice in this space. I wanna introduce Tom Tate. Tom, why don't you uh, introduce yourself to the audience today? Yeah, uh, as I mentioned, my name is Tom Tate. It looks like I have a couple of neighbors in the chat. I'm in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, so I'm just outside of Philadelphia. Uh, and, you know, I've been doing email marketing for quite a while. I was working at AWeber. We were an email service provider. Uh, they are an email service provider, similar to ConvertKit, um, Constant Contact, MailChimp. And when I started, we had 120,000 customers uh, and they were all email marketers. And I learned so much about what goes into creating a really addictive, fantastic, engaging email newsletter that is going to help you cultivate an audience that's going to support you um, you know, financially and professionally. Um, so I learned a ton about the email newsletter side. And I also learned a ton about email automation, you know, which is a whole nother beast, you know, setting up autoresponder sequences and funnels and all these things. So uh, super excited to contribute in the chat tonight. And I'm really excited to uh, check out Jeff's presentation. And if you have any questions uh, for me specifically, uh, you know, feel free to chime in in the chat. I'll be pretty active in there tonight. And so, Tom, thank you so much for doing that. I'm looking forward to, to a little back and forth here, and, and, and thank you for bringing your knowledge into here. Of course, we are using our chat tonight. If you have any questions about that, please feel free to enter the chat, and, and, and I'll be happy to answer all the questions, and, and feel free to poke and prod me with any of the questions that are coming up. And again, we are talking tonight about how to build a profitable email list, which is different than just building an email list. We're going to go through a few different topics tonight. Number one, we're going to talk a little bit about why. Why is it important that we build our email list? We're going to talk about different email marketing companies. We're going to talk about how to choose their avatar and how to create content specifically for that avatar. We're going to deal with opt-in forms. I hope I spelled that right. We're going to be dealing with segmentation and automation, which is so important when working on these different topics. And we're gonna go through some of the email marketing myths. And maybe you guys have some questions. We're gonna leave a lot of time here at the end for Q&A, and we'll make sure that we get everything in together. Sounds like fun? I hope so. And so what I really want you guys to do is walk away with a few things. I want you to walk away with knowing the difference between what an email marketing is and newsletters. 
not every email that you get is treated differently or treated equally, and not every company offers the same features. And so we're gonna go through that and we're gonna try to figure out what the best option is for you. We're also gonna talk about creating the system that works for you. I, I'm one of those people that's crazy busy. I, I work 70 miles away and when I come home, all I wanna do is to be the dad to an amazing set of triplets. And at the same time, I need my website to work for me. So we're gonna talk about different things that I've done over the last couple of years and I'm gonna give you guys the floor to share what's been working for, with you and what hasn't been working for you. And we're gonna see if we can help you guys out figuring out how you guys can make your profitable email list. Next, we're gonna talk about the ability to replicate for future products and future projects. Um, a good case in point was, again, I mentioned this is the second of our webinars. A lot of the information that was sent out is stuff that we used in our first webinar and we really just recycled it, changed some of the words around, and that saved an awful lot of time knowing that we didn't have to start from scratch with everything. And at the end, we're gonna give you a roadmap for success. I want you guys to walk away from here with something in your hand that you can actually take with you and then get to work on. Knowing that if you have any questions, we are here to help you guys out. You can always reach us over on teachercast.net and check us out and certainly be a part of our TeacherCast educational network. So I want to stop right there and just do a quick round for, are there any questions in the chats? Is there anything on people's minds? How are we doing tonight, everybody? Oh, we got a lot of people tonight. Uh, no major questions in the chat yet. I see a lot of Philly people here. Welcome. I, I miss the town down there. All right, so let's get started. A little bit about information from myself. Uh, my name is Jeff Bradbury. I am an educator in Connecticut right now, and I am the current, uh, yeah, I am the co-host. I'm gonna edit that out and start that one more time. And I am the host of the TeacherCast Educational Network, where we do podcasts, we do blogs, we do professional development for educators around the world. And for six years, I kind of felt like I had an idea for TeacherCast, but I really didn't have the tools to do it. I was throwing a bunch of darts out there, creating blog posts, creating podcasts, putting out an email list, trying to grow a newsletter, not quite understanding what the thing was. And I felt like over six years, I was doing a lot of work for very little reward. And that all changed last year in Philadelphia when I went to podcast movement. I learned about these things called funnels. I learned a little bit about email marketing. I learned a little bit about how to actually do a presentation at a conference like podcast movement, like at ISTE or whatever, and do that presentation in a way that's gonna be generating emails during your presentation, which then turns into leads, which then turns into subscribers, which then turns into cash. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. How do you create content for yourself? How do you organize your, your website, your podcast, your everything that you're working on, and how do you use that to then transition that into a check at the end of the day? I'm excited to be doing this right now. Some of you guys on the call uh, have kind of heard me talk a little bit about some of the great things. Because of my email newsletter, in the last two weeks, I actually inked a sponsorship that is going to be paying off my car. And I'm actually in the middle right now of closing two more sponsorships that's gonna be paying off my wife's car. I'm extremely excited about this. And I'm sharing this with you because it is possible to be a one person show doing a one person side hustle and bringing in some extra income that's gonna be life changing for your family and give you guys the freedom to actually spend time together, spend time with the kids and less time doing your side hustle, less time worrying about where the next mortgage paycheck is coming from. So everything that we're gonna be dealing with right now, I want you to know that I've been working at this really hard for the last two years, and it's, it's, it's changed my life and changed my family because of all these little things. So that's where we're coming from today, and, and this is why it's all about trying to focus. Now again, I'm looking at our audience here and I noticed that we've got bloggers, we've got coaches, we've got consultants, we've got professionals, we've got educators. And I want you guys to take a moment in the chat room right now. I want you to answer this question. Who is your avatar? Do you have an avatar? And I wanna, I wanna know who your avatar is. When you turn on that microphone, when you write that blog post, when you shake somebody's hand and you're trying to sell somebody something or introduce yourself to somebody, who is your avatar? We need to be looking at everything that we're doing in terms of 
Who are we talking to? Who are we selling to? How are we going to get there? Myself and education, we're in that weird spot. We want to be making a dollar. We want to be finding the value. But a lot of times educators aren't quite interested in spending money on things. So we have to figure out how to create that content for people who are interested in supporting you. So take a moment right now, I'll give you a couple seconds and look at who, you know, who is your avatar? Who are you speaking to? Is it the fifth grade teacher or is it the fifth grade teacher who's interested in buying from you, interested in subscribing to you? And I see somebody here saying he thinks his avatar is a mid-career teacher leader looking for leadership opportunities. That's awesome. Thank you so much for commenting on that. Take a moment in our, in our chat and tell us who your avatar is. While you're doing that, let's define a little bit what I say by avatar, right? Our avatar is really that person that we're writing our content to. So, so picture this, right? Close your eyes. What do they look like, right? What do they do? Are they a teacher, doctor, lawyer, administrator, business, business owner, public relations firm? Is the person that you're writing to the person that's consuming your content? Is the person that you're writing to, is the person that you're, that you're interacting with, are they going to be the person on your podcast? A lot of times for me, the person that's on my podcast isn't the person whom I'm writing to. A lot of times for me, the person who's on my podcast, I'm going to only know for a half hour, for 45 minutes for the recording. But my relationship might be with the marketing, the communications, the public relations, the whoever it is. So when we look at this, we need to figure out what does your avatar want? What does your avatar want from you? What are they seeking? And not only what are they seeking, but how are they seeking their information? Meaning, if we go to one of our examples here and it says my avatar is that mid-career teacher leader, we want to figure out every single thing about that mid-level teacher leader. Is that person on Twitter? Is that person on Facebook? Do they do Pinterest? Are they more a podcast listener? How are they doing their podcast? You really want to understand and learn where the data of your avatar is so you can create that content for. Let's see, I have somebody here saying my avatar is an instructional coach who is looking to build their confidence as a coach through receiving coaching. That's a great avatar. That's a really great avatar. And I have one saying here, My avatar is educators who don't have the time to research ed tech tools, but wants to implement ed tech tools and practices into their classrooms. Eric, I'm glad you said that. I want you to keep that in mind. We'll talk a little bit about that as we go through here. So again, with our avatar, what, what do they look like? What do they already know is important? Okay, so for Eric, he, you know, he's looking for teachers that, that want to get into technology, but don't quite know how to, or don't quite know where to. That's awesome. What do, kind of things do your avatar want to learn? What, what are they seeking out? What are they typing into Google? What are they searching for? And then really, what are their goals and objectives? Are they coming to you just to listen to your podcast? Are they coming to you to read your blog post? Or are they coming to you to buy something, to rent you for an hour? Are they coming to you to seek your help, your counseling, your consulting, whatever it is? What are they looking to do for you here? We always have a few questions when we're looking at this. We always say, what are the most important qualities of your avatar? And for me, that's an easy answer. The important quality of my avatar is somebody who wants to hire me, somebody who wants to take action on something. And it's okay. We can create blog posts for the masses. We can create podcasts for the masses. But we also want to keep focused on the fact that the stuff that we're putting out, the stuff that we're creating has to have a conversion rate, has to have a low bounce rate. And by bounce rate, I mean somebody who listens to a show and then never comes back or goes to a website and then never comes back again. One of the th metrics that we're going to talk about tonight, and I really want you to go look in your Google Analytics for, is something called bounce rate. And I also want you to look up dwell time. And again, bounce rate is I go to your site, it's like I step into your front door and then I leave your house. Or do I step into your front door and then I, do I enter your kitchen, enter your living room, sit down for a while, and then leave? How many different pages do I go to? That's your bounce rate. Dwell time is a very, very important ranking for Google. Dwell time is how long are you actually on the website? Am I on your website for 30 seconds? 
or am I on your website for 30 minutes? And any podcaster out there knows I could have a thousand people on my blog post page, but if I notice that the average person is only on my blog post page for 30 seconds, they're not listening to my podcast, or at least they're not listening to my podcast on my website. Okay, so what are the most important qualities of your avatar? There's a lot of questions to be answered or a lot of answers to be thought about in there. What happens if your avatar decides to get up and leave the room? This is something I'm looking forward to talking to Tom about of what happens if they decide they don't want you? Is that good? Is that bad? What happens if you're selling to the wrong person? That's some, certainly something I've been guilty of many times, even recently. And then lastly here, how do we determine what is the best way of connecting with our avatars? What do you think the answer is? How, what, and, and please leave this one in the chat. Like, how do we determine what is the best way of connecting with our avatar? So I think the, the answer for that is a little bit easier than we give it credit for. But let's see if you guys can come up with all that stuff. What is the best way to determine our avatars? And maybe some of you guys, if you want to like, type the questions and stuff into the chat, we can get some, get some information going on there. I'll tell you one of the things that's been very helpful for me. I actually created a needs assessment. And this is something that we get from education, but I actually created a brief survey that I give out to all of my email clients or, or anybody who signs up for my email list. If you're on this webinar, you probably got an email that says, please take my user survey. And I do that knowing that I'm gonna get a good range of people. And what that's gonna do, that actually gives me a few metrics. Number one, that gets people to click on my email. And we'll talk about why that's important. The first email, the second email that goes out, we want people to click on that. Now, the next thing is in the, in the need assessment, I'm asking you a series of questions. How old are you? Male or female? What do you do? What are you looking for? And then the most important thing I always ask in my needs assessment is, how can I help you? Why, like, what are you looking to learn? And I take all of that data very seriously, and I take all of that data, and I use that, again, to put cash in my pocket. Because when people are asking you about your lists and they're looking to invest in you and in your services, they're gonna be asking questions such as, um, like, what's the average income for your listeners? Are you mostly speaking to males? Are you mostly speaking to females? What's the average age? What do they do? And if you can come back, for instance, for me, I know that the majority of the people in my newsletter list are teachers. Of course they are. But I could also tell you that 45% of my teachers are tech coaches. And so when I'm working with tech coaching co type companies or tech coaching type um, companies, I can look and I can show them the data that says, look, I've got X number of people on my list, but 45% of them say that they're tech coaches why don't you come with me and we'll put together a package and I'll, I'll support you, I'll sell your product, we'll get things going. And the next thing you know, we have a contract. And it all comes down to setting up that first needs assessment that is gonna ask your, your users, who are you, what can I do for you, where do you come from, all these basic questions. You'd be surprised how many people actually answered it. Maybe some of you guys on the, on the survey have answered it and that's awesome. And if you have, thank you for that. I'm gonna take a quick moment here. Are there any questions that we wanna pop up? Let's see. Excellent. The next thing that we wanna do after we figure out who our avatars are, who we're speaking to, is we wanna come up with a content strategy. How are we gonna be building this? Now, we can do an entire webinar on content strategy, but really what we wanna think about is not just who the avatar is, right? The who do we want, who, who, what do they need, where do they need it? but also the content strategy of how often do they publish, right? You might ask people, do you listen to podcasts? Well, you know that not everybody can consume a daily podcast from you. How many podcasts do you listen to? If you, if you know that the average guest or the average listener of yours listens to 45 different podcasts, you know that you're just one of 45. If they say that they only listen to one or nine, you know, five, five to six podcasts, you know that you can put out more content. You also wanna figure out what kind of content people are listening to, the long form or short form. For podcasters, this is easy. It's, all the information is right into Apple Podcasts. You can see how long people are listening to your show. If you're on YouTube, you can, you can see how long people are watching your content. And if you're doing an hour long podcast and you realize that on YouTube, people are only watching the first 15 minutes and bouncing, 
maybe you make a decision and not do the entire hour. And the reason I'm starting with this and not starting on the heavy email marketing is because you want to make sure that you're delivering the right content to your audience so that way they keep coming back. If they keep coming back, they're going to subscribe to your newsletter. Your stats will go up, and you'll be able to then have those conversations with public relations firms, with companies, with people who are looking to purchase your, conf uh, your, your services and start to know, like, and trust you in the field. Does this make sense? Now, there's a few things that we offer here on TeacherCast. I love to have you guys check everything out and subscribe. If you're over on TeacherCast, you can click over here on our free stuff. And I've got a ton of free goodies, both for podcasters, for teachers, for tech coaches. And one of the things that I want to offer you guys is our template. And we've got a few templates here. We do have a content, a, a, a Google Sheets template here that is basically a to-do list. This is something that I use every single day to help organize. When I have meetings with people, I'm writing in here. It keeps me on track. I can move things around. Think of this as a very light version of Asana or Monday.com or Plutio or um, what's the other one I'm missing? Um, the point is make sure that these things are, are here and ready for you. And that's a free download. You can certainly check that out over on TeacherCast. The other thing that I have for you is an editorial calendar. Again, this is all done in Google Sheets. But the nice part about this is you can actually write down your editorial calendar for your blogs or your podcasts. This particular template has two tabs, one for podcasting and one for blogs. And the way that I do this is I put the title of my podcast. I put the post topic. I put the author down, who, like, who's my co-host. And then I just keep track. Did I start a post? Did I finish a post? Did I finish a bumper? These are things that are going to be extremely important to you as you start mass producing everything and working with clients. Every time I have a client, I start a new one of these. So that way I can share with my clients how the process of the contract is going. It makes you look professional. More professional, more gooder, more cash, more contract. And so it's really important that we take time to, to you know, up our game a little bit, look professional. And again, all that stuff can be downloaded for free right here over on TeacherCast. So let's talk. Let's really get into this, all right? Should you be doing a newsletter or email marketing? Please do me a favor in the chat, um, put an answer to this question. Should you be doing a newsletter or should you be doing email marketing? What's the difference? Some people might be looking at this going, well, what's, what's the difference? What's the difference between a newsletter and email marketing? Are they the same thing? Are they different? I used to think that they were the same thing. For six years, I thought I was doing email marketing. I would get up every Sunday. I'd write a newsletter. I'd push it out. I'd get up on a Sunday. I'd, I'd write a newsletter. I'd push it out. I'd get up on a Sunday. I didn't want to do anything, and nothing happened. And it turns out there is a difference, right? There is a difference between a newsletter and email marketing. And I want to bring Tom in here in a second here, because really when it comes down to it, there is a huge methodology. There's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's so many different things to, go, to do between these two different things. Um, Tom, can you chime in here for a second? When it comes to newsletters and email marketing, let me put you on the spot. Just yes or no. Is there a difference between newsletters and email marketing? I think there can be a difference. Um, so I, everyone has a different definition of marketing. Everyone has a different perception of what marketing is. Uh, I'm going to share with you kind of just a decade of doing digital marketing, kind of what my working definition is of marketing. And it comes from John Janch, uh, who is from Duct Tape Marketing. And he always says that marketing is getting someone who has a need to know, like, and trust you. And I'll put that in the chat just so that you have it and you can write that down in your notes. Marketing is getting someone who has a need to know, like, and trust you. Um, you can send a newsletter that doesn't check off any of those boxes. You can send a newsletter that doesn't fulfill a need. Um, you can send a newsletter that, you know, could be interpreted as spam, you know, or just, you know, here's the latest going on with, the Philadelphia Phillies and you're sending it to people who don't care about baseball and they like star Wars, you know, they're not, you're not fulfilling their needs, you know, but I think that if you are sending something of value by way of a newsletter, you are doing marketing. If you're checking off all of those boxes, right. 
you're not doing any selling just yet, but you are doing marketing. You're finding someone who needs what you have and you're delivering that by way of an email newsletter. And, and if you do it consistently and you do it and you do it well, you're cultivating this no like, and trust, you know, with that particular audience, um, which is really, really helpful when you get into the selling, you know, which I think Jeff is going to lead us to. Um, so hopefully that, that is helpful. I mean, like the newsletter itself is the vehicle for, for the marketing, you know, but it could easily not do any marketing at all for you and your brand and your business if you're not executing, you know, in the right way. So that's my take on it. But, you know, Jeff, I'd love to hear yours as well. And, and thank you. I, I totally agree with everything you're saying. I think there is a difference between email marketing and newsletters. Um, I do both. And I do both based off of the different companies that I work with when it comes to my choice of email companies. Um, I've had a bunch that I've used. I've moved around. I used AWeber. It's a great company, highly recommended. I also use MailChimp and my current company is called ConvertKit. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about those in a moment and how all that stuff works. But the way that I look at this and say, how am I getting that whole like, no trust? And you know, Tom also mentioned, are you sending Phillies tickets to a Star Wars fan? I look at email marketing as targeted emails, targeted conversations with specific people. So I have a, a series of emails that I'll send out to you if you tell me that you're a podcaster. And I'll show you how I know that in a few moments here. If you're a podcaster, you're automatically put on a, on a drip campaign, on a drip list of, you know, this is a podcast, this is my favorite microphone, this is my favorite software, this is how I record. You get this set series of emails. It's only coming to you as a podcaster. If you're a tech coach, you get another series of emails that has nothing to do with podcasting. Or maybe I take that podcasting email and I turn it instead of being a studio podcaster, I'll rewrite the email and I'll put it into tech coach K12 lingo and I'll link to the same blog post or the same podcast episode. I'm specifically writing content for you. And I call it email marketing because I'm not manually doing this. Once I set these things up, it's done. It's gone. I, I just set it up. As you come in, as you subscribe, it works. And we'll talk a little bit about this later on as we go through here. Whereas a newsletter, that's my, here's every single week, you're going to get the big long newsletter of what is it? And it might have a section for podcasting and a section for tech coaching and a section for K-12 and a section for webinars and whatever. And that's going out to maybe my entire list, all whatever number I have at this point. And so I'm looking at this going, how can I not only connect with the specific people to give them specifically what they need, but then also how I can continue to generate content for everybody to helpfully cross paths with people. All of that stuff is able to be done because you have made the decision to find specific companies. And like I said, I, I've done a lot of different email marketing companies. Um, AWeber is an amazing company. They were actually the first company that I went with. I had MailChimp for a while. And again, my current company is called ConvertKit. So the people always ask, what company should I sign up with first? And Tom, you're on for this one in a second because I'd love to get your answer. If you're new, if you're just starting out, if this is something brand new for you, my suggestion is go free, right? MailChimp is the largest newsletter company or whatever the right term is there, is the largest news company out there. It's free up to, I think it's 2000 people and it gives you everything that you need from the opt-in forms to the fact that everything has APIs connected into it and, and you can use MailChimp for anything that you need and it's great to get you started. But it, it's limited. And help me out with this, Tom. It's limited in the fact that you can do a lot of things, but it doesn't really give you the ability on the free tier, on the free tier, to do all the segmentations and automations and, and list building that you would on a paid platform. So as soon as I got a chance to say, I want to take my, my email automations to the next level, start to build what we call funnels, automation, segmentations, that's when I switched over to ConvertKit and started making all of these different funnels. If you're brand new, MailChimp is great. AWeber is great. Um, K12 
convert kit i wouldn't recommend to new people because it starts at like 30 bucks a month or something like that and if you don't have it if you don't have any newsletter subscribers i wouldn't be wasting the money in there tom what's your thought on this free versus paid and i know you used to work at aweber but give us an idea of where to go if we're brand new starting off with this yeah definitely i i think that i would I, I typically recommend the same, you know, so I typically recommend that if you're not revenue positive at all in, in any facet of your business, and I'm not just talking about your email marketing being revenue positive, like if you're not making a dollar from, you know, your side hustle or a business that you're trying to launch, your number one goal is to develop that content strategy and, and start to connect with your audience. And I would, I would do that for free. Like I'd find free ways to do that. And there are a lot of free ways to do that. Um, you know, Janice brings up a really good point that is true. Um, when you are using a free provider, a free email provider, similar to shared web hosting, you'll hear about this occasionally, you know, if you're, if you're doing shared web hosting, you know, when one person's website who you have zero affiliation with this person and their website, if their website spikes, their traffic spikes, or if they do something malicious, you know, that could impact, you know, your specific site's performance. Email is very similar to that. Um, and if you're on a free tier, um, you are with a lot of other people who are on free tiers. And a lot of those people are doing spamming and malicious things. And like typically that can have an impact on your deliverability. What that means is, you know, sometimes you might be sending really fine, fantastic emails and they might end up in spam. Um, and that does happen. It happens from time to time. Um, so it's a caution uh, that you, you do tend to avoid that if you use a paid provider, um, you know, not just Aweber, but ConvertKit, Emma, Constant Contacts, you know, some of the ones on the list. So I, I, that is true, you know, what Janice wrote. But I don't think that the risk outweighs, you know, just getting started and, and getting started on the cheap. You know, so that would be like, my recommendation. This is kind of like podcasting. Can you stick your podcast audio file in Dropbox instead of purchasing hosting space at Lipson or Blueberry or Captivate or something right there? Same um, thing. Yes. Same thing. So my question to you, Tom, and, and, I, and I'm going to tell you the answer is no. So I'm, I'm setting you up. Should you allow WordPress to create, manage, and do all those great things to your newsletter? Should you trust WordPress to be your, your email newsletter sub plug-in uh, subscriber of choice? Oh, the answer is, the answer is no. So like Good. you shouldn't use WordPress <laughs> and you also shouldn't use like your own personal Gmail account. Like you shouldn't just yes. like copy and paste. Like you shouldn't manage everything in like a spreadsheet and then copy and paste that in a, in a Gmail, you know, that's not what a personal email provider like Gmail, like an, an ISP is for, there, there, um, you should use a provider. There, there's some great plugins out there. And, and, and I like these. Um, I don't know if the company's still around. There was one called mail poet, which basically it was a plugin that you stuck into word. Maybe it's still around. I don't know. It's a plugin that you stick into WordPress and essentially it is now your newsletter. It will capture all of your emails and everything and it'll manage everything but it's managing it in your WordPress site. I would never do something like that. Um, but there, are a lot of, there are a lot of great plugins that will connect to any of these providers. Absolutely. You know, so like good form plugins, that's different. You know, but, different. but what Jeff is saying is managing your email marketing and sending emails on your behalf from your WordPress site or server, definitely don't do that. So I want to I want to go into a deep dive with everything here, um, and I, I'm cautious of the time. But I just want to do a quick. Does anybody have like a, a quick? You want to jump on and do an, an, an audio question here? I'd be happy to take any any personal que well not personal question, but anything like that. I see Eric's popping on. I can, um, and I you can just stop me if this is something you're going to cover later. But uh, for us newbies that are in here that might not have a newsletter or a uh, any type of email marketing. Um, before we sign up for uh, MailChimp or anything like that, what should we have ready? Um, so once you sign up and you're gonna you know do your first email round of email marketing, other than that survey, that response survey, what are some things that we should have? Should we make up a template? Should we, uh, like, what needs to be included to make this a, a email marketing uh, or a newsletter that's going to stand out? You should have some examples. 
I will tell you how I've learned all this stuff. I, I, I basically gave myself a master's degree in newsletters because I set up a second Gmail account. So it wasn't going to be bothering my main account. And on that second Gmail account, I'm simply, and I do this almost every day, I'm subscribing to as many newsletters as possible. And I know people are going to roll their eyes and go, why? Because it's simple. When we're looking at what does a newsletter look like, when we're looking at funnels, when we're looking at how to build emails, when we're looking at what works and what doesn't work, we know that everybody has their own style, flair, et cetera, and everybody thinks they're right. While you're jumping into this, create a second Gmail account, and every time you're on Facebook and you get that ad that says, download my PDF, give me your information, I do, because now, I have all of Pat Flynn's emails and funnels. I now have all of John Lee Dumas's emails and funnels. I now have all of Yoast's newsletters, email funnels. And so I'm actually building myself an entire library of email marketing from the best people in the world that make millions of dollars a month on their email marketing. And so for instance, when I set up this webinar, and I, sh and I created the, 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 the platform and the website and, and the, the landing page and everything else. I did that because when I was creating that website, I had, I'm not kidding, 15 landing pages in front of me. And I had 15 different newsletters in front of me. And I had all these different things. And for me, that was my master's degree. That was my, that was my education and how to do this and, and what I need to do to move forward. So I would say always have an example. If you're going to write a symphony, you got to be listening to other symphonies. Tom, what's your answer on that one? Yeah, I would second that. You know, you want to be consistent when you get started, even if you have like five subscribers, you know, 15 subscribers just to get started. So similar to if you were to launch a podcast, you know, one of the recommendations with podcasting is that you have a couple episodes pre-recorded before you launch, you know, so you're not launching with one episode and then it's like, oh no, like, what do I do now? I have to like be consistent and release a new one next week or the following week. So like, if you want to draft out content in advance before you even sign up or get started, like that's not a bad thing to do. Obviously it depends on what your newsletter is going to be and, and who you want to write to. But um, if you're writing a topical newsletter on this week's news, you can't write 15 of those out in advance because you don't know the news, right? But if you're writing about topics that you know, um, you know, deep diving on topics that you know really well, you can crank out, you know, 15 drafts, you know, or 10 drafts, and then you will, you will have those, you know, ready to go. In terms of, you mentioned template, you know, in terms of a template, um, I actually recommend, and maybe Jeff, you're going to cover this, like don't over-design your newsletter. No. Um, focus on the letter, not on the newsletter, you know, and, and, and write it almost like a personal newsletter. ConvertKit actually does a really good job of, of kind of yeah. almost and, forcing your hand, you know, to do it that way um, and treat it like you're almost writing, you know, just a regular old email from Gmail to somebody. And that's the difference. And, and, and look, I, I, if you're going to pick, if you're going to take away anything, from this, and I got a ton more stuff that we can talk about, or I can talk about one topic for the next three days. Email marketing is all about understanding how Gmail, the world's largest email inbox, works. If you create bad emails, they're not gonna end up in the inbox. Even if I'm a subscriber of you, it's not gonna end up in my inbox. If you send me something and you send me something and send me something and I'm not interacting with it, Gmail is going to put it into spam for two reasons. Number one, there's a, every, by law, it says unsubscribe at the bottom. And number two, if Gmail sees that I'm not interacting with something, it, it's going to automatically dub this as spam. And I know that because every time my parents send me things, it goes into the spam box because I never interact with it. So that's one of the reasons why on the first or second email, I say, take my survey because I want Gmail to see the email coming in from TeacherCast and the person automatically clicks on it and takes action on it. And that's one of my tricks of getting it into the inbox. You're not fighting a person to click on an email first. You're, click, you're, you're fighting Gmail to put it in front of that person first. 
So when they say knowing is half the battle, knowing is you got to know how Gmail works. And I could talk about that one for a long time, just as anybody else. But really, let's talk about how we get there. And I want to show you guys some examples, and we'll go through this one really quickly, but we want to talk about opt-in forms. And opt-in forms are really, it, it's the first way of getting into things. And I've got some examples here of different opt-in forms, what works and what doesn't work. And I'm going to show you what works and what doesn't work, and I'm going to show you why it works. The first one I want to show you does not work. This does not work, and I'm going to show you why I do it this way. On the front page of TeacherCast, it says name, email address, and stay updated. Now, this sounds really crazy, but the first thing on the top of my page above the fold that everybody sees when they first come to my website doesn't work. And it doesn't work on purpose. I made this so it doesn't work. And I don't want this to work because I want you to actually click one of these things. I want you to come to my website and say, oh, I'm interested in integrating technology. I'm interested in going into a podcast. But I, you know, if you really wanna come and sign up for this, that's great. You're going to find that most people, help me, Tom, you're, most people aren't going to be clicking on here because if they're brand new, you haven't convinced them. You haven't made that like, know, and trust. So you want to get them to actually see your content. Again, that's improving your bounce rate. That's adding dwell time. That's gaining your analytics. And that's SEO boost for everybody. So when you come to the website, I want you to see featured news and updates with some nice posts and stuff here. I want you to see this. This is not important to me. And because of that, I only have name and email address. Let's click on a few more. Sidebar forms. Usually when we think of, of newsletters, we think of sidebar forms. Do people really see them? Do we put them in the best light? Where are they? So if I click on the sidebar form here, I have a, a post of mine a recent one, and you'll notice here, this is in what I consider the perfect location. It's in the top right. Everybody sees this. And if you notice, this here, this here is the form. And if you're, look, if you're thinking about this as a WordPress widget, this picture is a widget. This is the image widget. And then the form is like this. So I made this form. It's called a naked form because there's nothing on it. And it's very, very simple. I asked for your first name. I ask for your email address. You never ask for your last name. And there's a statistic, I don't know all the, st all the number stats, but the less that you give, the more options you are. Think about it, if, if, you're, if your opt-in form says name, email, phone number, birth date, social security, no one's gonna do it. If I just get your email address, I don't know who you are. I can't personalize the emails. That's another conversation. You can't personalize the emails. I can't say, hey, Tom, how you doing? Or, hey, Tom, I heard you want to be a tech coach, right? So first name, last name, sorry, first name, email address. And then right here, it says IMA. Everything except for my front page has this. I am a classroom teacher, tech coach, administrator, podcaster, librarian, other. Why do I have these? Pod librarian, college, university. I put college and library and university because on my survey, somebody said, you don't represent me on your opt-in forms. And I said, that's easy to do. So now I have this. And because of this, as soon as you enter ConvertKit, I have your name is Eric, here's your email address, and I'm gonna automatically put you in the podcaster's newsletter. And the first email that you're gonna get says, welcome, we're gonna learn all about podcasting together. Tell me about your show, why don't you email me? Why don't you click on our podcaster survey? Why don't you subscribe to my podcast? So I'm automatically, I'm having a conversation with you about podcasting. And I'm trying to get you to, to click on something on my newsletter. And now notice this doesn't say subscribe. There's an action verb here. Download our free template. This is all psychology and this is all actionable stuff. And this is branded. So this is my, you know, this little goldy thing here. This is my podcasting colors. So that's my sidebar. If I want to look at the simple blog post, here's a blog post. Again, this here, notice, similar but different, all branded, the same idea. But in the middle of this, I have download our free template. Right here, I have a picture of what the template's going to look like, and here it's simply name, email. I don't want to, I, on here, I purposely didn't care about IMA because I probably already have that. Or if I added a third column, it's not going to look as nice. Please keep the, uh, the questions coming. I love them. Um, I see there's a private com comment. I'll get to that in a second. Thank you for that. All right, next one, bottom of the post pages. 
these are the ones that you mostly find. Like, watch my stuff. Look, 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 read, 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 read. And then all the way at the bottom, here it is. The problem with this is, do people actually get to the bottom of your blog post? So I do this for two reasons. Number one, if I get to the bottom of the blog post, Google knows. Number two, I make this nice and big. And again, I am A. So if I'm down here, I probably read through all the content and I want to make sure that I'm now subscribing to something that, again, I like, know, and trust. And I put this particular one on many blog posts because this happens to be my, my ultimate guide. This one is, a, this one is a, everybody downloads this one. I make sure that everybody downloads this one as much as possible. Um, then you have the last two. We have pre-made forms. This one here happens to come directly from ConvertKit. It's, it's, it's nice. ConvertKit in the last year has completely redesigned all their forms, making it easier, nicer, and, and a lot more eye appealing. Every company has their forms and stuff like that. I kind of like this, but as you notice, it's kind of like, ugh. And so because of that, we have two examples here of what landing pages are. And again, landing pages is another webinar altogether, but this is what you probably signed up for to do this. Again, this is actually on the TeacherCast site, which means I get the analytics for it. I can now track who's on this page and who you are, my avatar. It's branded. It says two different calls to actions, register or learn. And I can tell by, the, by which button where you're going to go. If you say learn more, I'm going to guarantee you're not going to sign up. But if you hit register, I'm gonna, you're probably guaranteed you're going to sign up. I can funnel you depending on these different things. I've got my little picture. And now there's two calls to action on here, sign up or schedule me. And so I've created this not by accident, but by looking at dozens of other people's um, landing pages. Here's another example. This is the one for my mastermind. This starts off with a coupon, right? This says, are you this? I'm asking a question. Are you somebody that needs my services? Do you qualify for needing my services? If you're not, you're going to bounce off the page. If you are, it says, hey, how can I sign up? Or I'm interested, but not yet. Then we break it down. Have you ever considered? Well, here's who I am. What will I learn? Here's what you're going to learn. Here's some of the things that I'm going to give away. Here's all the freebies that you're going to get for joining our mastermind program. Finally, halfway down the page, we get to the first box that says sign up. Then I have social proof, people that are in the mastermind. Then I finally down here, I have our fact questions, more fact questions, and then again, sign up for it. So this landing page is really a journey to number one, get you subscribed and paying, and number two, get you interested in the content that we're putting out. Let's see, we have a couple of questions here. Is there, is there no point to offer a 30-minute free discovery session on whatever session in exchange for names? Yes, there's a point to doing it because we're here for this webinar. This is the 30-minute discussion. So if you want to create little webinars and things, go for it. If you want to say, I'll give you 15 minutes of my time or I'll give you a webinar or I'll give you a free podcast, absolutely do that stuff to get people interested in it. Um, Tom, I know we've got a time crunch, but do you want to chime in on anything about opt-in forms from your awesome experience? Yeah, I think that's one. Uh, if you go back to uh, the one that was the sidebar form. Yeah, this one's really great. Uh, I, I definitely would recommend a lot of people, not so much anymore, but like a lot of people really said, you know, just leave it at email address because that's going to get you the best conversion rate. You know, that's going to get you the most opt-ins because you're asking the least amount of, for the least amount of information. And I think that that's definitely a misstep that a lot of people make with email marketing. I would recommend always ask for first name. Personalization is so incredibly crucial when you're trying to form a relationship with people. And, uh, and my only caution here, you know, with the IMA segmentation drop down is, you know, make sure that you are doing that across your site. I, I know, Jeff, you said that that's pretty much everywhere except mm -hmm. for your homepage. Um, if you don't do that everywhere that you have forms, uh, you kind of run into a, a management issue as you scale, right? Because you'll have these straggling um, subscribers that really don't have an affiliation to anything. And you can 
you can tag them later, you know, that's a little bit more advanced, you know, you can try to segment them later. Uh, but I think if you standardize this at the, at the forefront, it's really, really helpful. And you know, the people who are going to balance and not give you that information, you know, that's very simple, basic information. They're probably the people you don't want on your email list anyways, you know, if they're not willing to tell you that they're a podcaster. Um, you know, they're certainly not the type of people who might be interested in buying from you, you know, at any point. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. So there's a question in the chat box about pop-ups. And if you notice that whenever I load at these pages, there's a little pop-up that comes up here on the top that says, are you an educational podcaster? And again, this is a call to action. If you notice, this came up not right away. It actually comes up after seven and a half seconds. That's mathematically done towards my analytics. And so what do I think about pop-ups? Here's my response. And, and I'm going to say these words, so please don't take offense to it. Imagine being at home and somebody's going to come to the door to, to take you out on a date, right? So imagine your, your name is, I don't know, I don't, let's not go down there. But let's imagine that, that, that some guy is going to come and pick you up and take you out on a date, right? And you, he comes to the door, he knocks on the door, you open the door, and he's standing there. And immediately, he drops down to his knees and he gives you a ring and says, would you marry me? You don't know the guy. You've never talked to him. You don't know what he's doing. He, you just know, I'm seeing you for the first time and boom, proposal. Do something. Give me your email address. I don't buy those because what do we naturally do? If we go to a website and boom, there's a, there's a pop-up that blocks the entire screen, we're going to click out of that pop-up without even reading it or we're going to kill the tab and we're never going to go back. So people are getting more savvy about this. Email marketing companies are getting more savvy about this. Um, this here is all done from a company. Um, da, 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 da. Tom, help me out. Um, WP Beginner, Syed Belki. Uh, Optin Monster. Op, thank you. It's a long day and it's 110 degrees near. So this is actually done through a company called Optin Monster. Okay. Again, these here is done through ConvertKit. If you're going to do pop-ins, okay, um, don't put them in right away. You can also do exit intent, which means when, it, when your screen notices that your mouse goes outside of the box, then it pops up. So in other words, let your, let your readers see the actual blog content and, and, and work with it. But then as soon as you're ready to bounce, then have it pop up and say, hey, before you leave, sign up for my newsletter. Or what I've also done on some of my pages is I've said once you get 30 or 50 or 60% down the page, then pop it up or then slide it in or then show me from the side. I would not do pop-ups right away. I, everybody has their opinion on that, but you know, if you click on Twitter and you're gonna click on my website and before you even see the content, a pop-up comes that says, give me your email address or hey, you've won something. I, I wouldn't do that and I'd never go back to that website. So again, it all comes down to like, know, and trust, all right? It really comes down to how are we nurturing our avatars, right? Email marketing can be free or paid. We talk about all the different uh, angles that we have here. Broadcast emails are those emails that we put out every single week to everybody. Here's everything I'm doing. Here's my big newsletter. Sequences is what we talked about earlier with the newsletters or with the email marketing. Only to my tech coach group, only to my podcasters group. And all that's built off of automations. And Tom had mentioned something about tagging. And that's something that ConvertKit does well. I believe Aweber does well. There's a few other companies that are, that are big on tagging. And tagging says basically, if I am this, tag me as such. Or if I click on this link, now tag me as such. And that's a great way to start to build your, your automations and your sequences and mostly your segmentations. I, I want to end here and say know when to hold them, know when to fold them. Um, there's a myth that says if, a, if somebody signs up for your email newsletter and then leaves your newsletter, the myth says you're a bad, horrible, no good, nasty, dirty person. And that's a hard thing, right? Today, I sent out a bunch of emails. You guys probably got three or four emails to me today saying, don't forget about the, the webinar. I'm excited about the webinar. Thank you for being on the webinar. Don't hit hey, next, it's, it's an hour from now. And yeah, I flooded your inbox because I wanted to make sure that you guys were here. But then I looked at my ConvertKit stats and I went, oh, I lost 25 people. Maybe I shouldn't be sending those emails. And I realized those 25 people aren't here to buy stuff from me. 
I don't need them on my list. The more people that I have on my list that are not buying things from me is actually costing me money. So do you want a low, so the question is, do you want a low email list that, that converts high or do you want a million people on your email list that don't convert at all? And I think the answer for that's pretty obvious. You want the people that are gonna be paying you for your content and your services, okay? Um, because it's a little bit, I, I'll, I'll save some of the questions for round two or maybe if we have any questions, we can figure out the stuff we go on. Um, just to kind of wrap up here as we go through, these are some of the tools that I use. My, word, my website is all on WordPress. My website host, I use podcast websites. I love them. They're absolutely fantastic because as a podcaster, it gives you not only a great looking website, but it also gives you audio hosting too. And it gives you a brand new platform called Captivate. This is not a sell job. This is the fact that by saving me money, this is all, I, I use podcast websites to save me money. And everybody who's here on the webinar, um, podcast websites just launched an entirely, uh, an amazing platform called Captivate. It's an audio host and I got you not, it's not the seven day trial, but I got you guys the 14 day free trial. So if you're interested in starting your podcast, let me know, I can hook you up on that and you can get free audio hosting for uh, half a month or so. Um, email, I use Gmail, newsletter, I use ConvertKit. Social media, I use TweetDeck. Um, not often, but I do. All my social postings, I use CoSchedule. Meet Edgar is certainly wonderful and awesome, and I'll give Tom a chance to talk a little bit about that. My project management software is called Plutio. Check it out. It's awesome. It's, it's half the price of all the other ones out there, Slack, Asana, et cetera. Does the same thing. Um, all my booking stuff is Book Like a Boss. I use Canva and Pixelmator. Events Frame, I found. I do my mastermind off of that. That's pretty awesome. And of course, there's my SEO and I use Google Sites for my data dashboard. If you're interested in learning about any of these things, um, please see me afterwards or send me an email. I'd be happy to set up a one-to-one -a -one session and show you how all these things run. Um, this is what keeps me going. This is what keeps me with my family. And this is the professionalism that I try to bring to my clients that help bring the contracts in. And it's, you know, if you say, go to my Google Calendar invite page, that doesn't look as good as saying, go to my teachercast.net slash contact or teachercast.net slash book me. And it's a professional looking booking form or professional looking like newsletter kit. All of these things help you look better in the eyes of your clients, in the, in the eyes of public relations and in the eyes of other professionals that are, that are interested in buying from you. It's all about perception. It's like a podcast. You're not going to listen to it if it doesn't look good. So, Let's kind of go through here and just kind of wrapping up. We have five tips for success. And Tom, feel free to chime in or, or, or cut me off here on any of these things. Tip number one, know your avatar, okay? Make a drawing of your avatar. I worked with a, with, a, with a podcaster recently. I said, who's your podcast audience? He says, I do it for administrators. Great. What kind of administrator? New administrators, 60-year-old administrators, that 30-year-old that, that, that has a family that's looking to go from assistant principal to principal to superintendent in the next two years. Who are you speaking to? Know who your avatar is. Draw that up. Hang it on there. Um, my, my, the person I was working with actually gave me a drawing. It was awesome. She did it on her iPad. It was a drawing of an administrator at a desk with paper just built up all over the place. She says, I want to do a podcast for administrators who don't know how to organize for their new position. And I want to help them become more successful by being more organized. I said, that's awesome. Know who you're speaking to. Create your content strategy around there. Understand that everything we do, and I mean everything, that single thing that we do, you're creating a mousetrap. You are creating a mousetrap. Every blog post is a mousetrap to get people to give you their email address. All the content that you do, is designed to get people to give, the, you, give you the email address. Every social post that you do is designed to get people back onto your website. Every newsletter you create, and we can talk about creating a newsletter with a thousand links, and we can talk about creating a newsletter with one link and one solid f f uh, focal point and call to action. I do them both, and there's different reasons for doing all that stuff. But everything that we do here is creating that mousetrap to get your emails. Because ultimately, you, you might be in a situation where you're talking to a public relations firm and they're going to say, all right, I know your blog numbers, I see your social, but let's talk newsletters. Show me how many email newsletters you have and what your open rate is. If you can show that you have X number of thousand emails and you have a 30% open rate, that's money in your pocket right there. And that's knowing how to build you know, newsletters that are actually going to convert. Uh, segment, uh, tip number three, segment, segment, segment. 
Okay, that's why every single thing except for the one says I am a so I can just focus on things. In other words, today, if you're already on my newsletter and you signed up for this webinar, you probably didn't get an email from me today saying, hey, we have a webinar. You only got an email from me that says, by the way, here's the calendar link, don't forget to show up. Okay, if, I, if you're already signed up for the webinar and I send you an email today that says, did you know we have a webinar? You're gonna look at me like, why are you sending this to me? You might even not even show up. But by segmenting it, I can say, send this email to the people who have already signed up and send this email, which is bigger, with, which has more graphics to it, it's a little bit eye catchier, send this to the people who aren't showing up yet. Social media, automate, but keep things personal. So it's okay to set up a funnel, it's okay to set up a sequence. And as Tom said a couple of times, make sure that your first name is on it. And I, and I track these things, I do A-B tests with first names and I do A-B tests without names. So I might say, hey Dan, how's your podcast going? And I might do an email that says, 10 reasons to make a good podcast. And they're the same email, but I know that when I say, hey Dan, how's your podcast going? I'm gonna get more people signing up for that and clicking into the email. More people clicking onto the email, Gmail likes you and your, your, your numbers go up from there. And again, with email marketing, don't be afraid to thin the pack. Um, there's something called a cold subscriber. Tom, maybe you can explain what a cold subscriber is, but basically I go into all my cold subscribers and I say, if you haven't interacted with my content in six to eight months, you might not be getting it, you might not be interested, and I don't wanna pay for you to be on my list, Bye bye And that's okay. Um, I'm also at that part in ConvertKit where I'm at a limit, where if I go above a certain number, I get charged like another four or $500. And so I'd rather kill thousands of cold subscribers that aren't interacting with me, that aren't ever gonna pay for my content than to have them on my newsletter and I'm paying for them. Tom, what is a cold subscriber? Is it, is it 60 days, six months? What, what, is, what is the definition? Uh, maybe, maybe for AWeber and for Edgar, they're two different things. What is, what is the length of time before you become a cold subscriber? Yeah, it really depends on the frequency that you send. You know, so I, I follow a lot of you know, email marketers who they'll email every single day, you know, so they, they might say that if you haven't opened in the past 20 emails for me, then, then I'm going to identify you as a cold subscriber. Um, you know, for somebody who emails weekly, you might say you haven't opened a newsletter, a weekly newsletter in six to eight weeks, you know, and that's, you know, two months, you know, 60 days. Um, you know, so it, it really depends. There's not like a, a solid definition that everyone follows. Like it's really on, on you, like how you want to define your cold subscribers. Like you want people on your list who don't want your stuff. Um, or do you want people on your list who want the value that you're sending? Um, and you know, one thing that, you know, I've seen work really, really well, um, is invite people to unsubscribe and do it often. Yeah. Um, you at, can do at that the top of your list. You can do that at the very top of your emails. Um, you know, I, 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 I follow, um, uh, Nick Loper, uh, who, who writes really good emails. Um, he has a podcast, uh, I think it's called the side hustle show. Mm -hmm. Um, at the bottom of his emails, he has, and, and this is automated, right? Like it's, it's in the footer of his emails. It says you subscribed on this date. So it reminds you of the date that you subscribed, which is really smart. Cause a lot of people, They'll sign up for your freebie, you know, your giveaway, your PDF, your templates or whatever. They'll download that and they'll just completely forget about you, you know, for six months, right? They won't open any of your emails. Um, they'll ignore them. And then one day they will notice one of those emails and they'll mark you as spam. And that actually really harms you um, and it harms your deliverability. So like, it's really helpful to just have that at the bottom and, and just say, Hey, just as a reminder, you signed up on, um, teacher cast, you know, you have your domain name, this, you know, dot com on this date. Um, that's really, really helpful because it's a reminder and then invite them, you know, if you no longer want to receive this, these emails, click the unsubscribe link right here and you can, yeah. you can have all that within your emails. Um, so I definitely recommend that for sure. I've um, and then mine set up to say, if you want to unsubscribe from the sequence, like, okay, I, Perfect, you, yeah. you guys might say at the end, don't send me any more stuff. The webinar is horrible, but I still want to get all your podcasting stuff. You've got the manual option in all of my emails to say out of this sequence, but keep me here. Yeah, and you can do that by preference, you know? So like, you know, Jeff, you could have written today, 
you know, like if, if you want to stay on my list, but you never want to hear about webinar opportunities, click here, you know, and then by clicking there, you could tag them, you know, like no dash webinars, you know, and then you would segment all those people out anytime you have a webinar opportunity, which is really uh, helpful. All right. So let's kind of take a couple of things here. Um, I know we're at time, but I just want, you know, again, my success story is simple. Learning about doing these things, kind of obsessing about doing these things has helped out my family tremendously. And, and I love to work with you guys to help out you and your family. I know everyone's here because they saw, how do I make money off of all of this stuff? And, you know, if that's something that you're interested in, let's work together. Um, find me afterwards, send me an email, shoot me a, hey, this was great. Please feel free to even shoot me a, hey, you could have done this better or I want to know about next time. I would love to figure out how we can work together and how I can help you. Where to find some help after this? You can always go to my website, teachercast.net, steal anything, take anything, and feel free to ask any questions that you want. Um, if you're into podcasting, I do have a great site called educationalpodcasting.com where you can learn how to do all the audio and video stuff. And I put a lot of email marketing tips and tricks into all that too. If you're looking for help with your website, you can always go over to educationalwebdesign.com. And if you're looking for any help with that, be happy to as well. If you're looking for more of this stuff, I've also got a great site called Build Your EDU Brand. And your website bonuses, I'm going to send you guys an email. Um, if you're looking to do coaching with me, I can help you out. And I always give discounts for anybody who comes to my newsletters. And on top of all of that, um, I am going to give you guys this link to actually do our Build Your EDU Brand Checklist. It is a fantastic little PDF that I use for all my clients to help them figure out what they're doing. It puts everything all in one spot. So... By the way, I know it's late for a lot of people. I want to say thank you guys for being here. I'm going to stick around for a little bit. I want to say thank you, Tom, for helping be my wingman. And, and you know, this is a hobby of mine, but this is a passion of mine. And this is something that I've kind of honed in over the last couple of years to support my family. It's what we're all here for and what we're all looking to do. And if you have any questions about anything, I want to help you guys out. And at this point, I'm going to close off the webinar by saying what we say at the end of every show, which is, guys, this is an amazing experience for you guys to have the opportunity to support yourself and support your family. So until next time we talk, keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with other people. You've been listening to the TeacherCast Educational Network, hosted by Jeff Bradbury. Please reach out to the show with all of your questions on Twitter at TeacherCast or online at www.teachercast.net. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And please take a moment to write a review in the App Store.